Hey, how you doing today? Hey, this is uh, Admin from uh, Plexcott. So anyways, we're just doing a quick video here to show you a little bit about Ambi. This is one of my favorite programs. Um, like I said, I know the, the author for, I think I've known you, Jamie, probably maybe about like eight months. Uh, sent several donations his way. Uh, he works really hard. And uh, honestly, your message that you posted on your site was is that uh, the donations help keep your wife off your back or pretty much you can buy her a present or something like that. So, um, but anyways... Uh, I just want to show you what Ambi is, how we use it with Plex Guide, and it, it just kind of gives you an idea of what it is and what it does. Because, you know, sometimes we read through the stuff through descriptions. Um, I think it was formerly known as Plex Request or something like that. But uh, sometimes there's good programs out there, but we don't know it because uh, it, it can seem a little bit overwhelming at times. So, anyways, here is his GitHub project, and here is his main website, Ambi.io. And so uh, I believe you can go on your phone and it's, uh, it's adjustable. But, you know, um, it's great to donate to Jamie here so you can help him out. So if you want to donate here, you have PayPal. Um, but again, I sent him several donations his way. But anyways, uh, he does have different versions of Ambi. Uh, he has version 3 out now and he has a beta. Oh, well, shit, I'm a, I'm a, little, I'm a little bit behind. Um, so it's just version three. So the version two uh, was a little spotty back in the day, and it wasn't his fault. It was it was uh, due to some of his code being reliant on Windows, and uh, I can't remember the name of it, Jamie, but I remember that it used to crash. So <laughs> I see that you explicitly put this here. Now working without crashes on Linux um, because it would it would just hang up. But again, it wasn't his fault, and I, I think the crashing and the amount of things he had to do kind of force them to kind of like, hey, I really got to rewrite this code and, and kind of get from there. So you can see he's got a lot of commits going on, branches, you know, make sure you start his uh, project here. And then um, we're just going to go ahead and kick it off. So uh, I'm in a virtual machine Linux box. So in order to deploy it through Plex Guide, we're just going to type sudo Plex Guide. And again, this is a, a program you can install from our website. And the purpose of this program is to make your life easier in deploying multiple applications and actually this program was born out of my frustration for Plex Cloud because it just never worked and I already had a Google backend drive and, and, and I was like you know what we, we just got to make something there's a lot of loose scripts out there but we just kind of had to get it going so I'm gonna go to programs you can find uh, Jamie's program Ambi uh, under under um, supporting and you pick number two and what it's going to do is it's going to just go ahead and run that YML and kick it all off for you. So uh, one thing you have to take note is that once this program is finished deploying, it can take like about like two minutes to show up, show up, and it's just the nature of things. So I'm just going to take this link here and post it. It, it might come up right away, but it does take a minute. Um, if you do do it through Plex Guide, the reason you don't see nothing here like Ambi slash whatever because I didn't set up a .com or anything. This is just for a virtual machine. So it's going to go through port. 3579, which was his older one. I think his newer one goes through 5000. But um, like I said, for the sake of our the way we use it, we use it this way. So I'm just going to go ahead and kick it off over here. And it may not show up right away. Again, it usually takes a minute. Yeah. So it's just like I thought it would, it'll take a minute for it to show up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that's the fastest I've ever seen it kick off. So he's got this load up. Uh, interface right here and it's going to help you uh, configure your server easily to this program so I'm just going to go ahead and click next so he actually set it up where you can use either or media server not just Plex uh, some people do use MB and make requests here you're going to have to log in with your username so I'm just going to go ahead and log in just for a quick pause okay so I just went ahead and entered my user information and uh, submitted it and it asked did I want to be uh, did I want my account to be the same thing so this is the interface right here. It's pretty simple. So um, let's say you're you're just here and you're just you know curious of like what movies are out there. You know, this is this is not going to do anything out there, but um, this allows you to make very particular requests. And here you can see it has the cover art. Now the great thing about this program is is that if if for some reason the person already has um, a legal copy already running on their server, it will let them know. It will say, hey, it's it's there. So you know, there's not there's not overlap. So uh, he's been streamlining the interface a lot lately and adding various things compared to Ambi version 2. Um, here you can always see a version you're on, so that's helpful. Uh, if you use Plex Guy, we use uh, Watchtower, so what it'll do is if, if he comes out with a new 
uh, version of Bombi. It will just go ahead and update automatically for you. So configuration. So here you go to customization. And so you can change the name up here to whatever you want it to be. And I remember talking to Jamie early on. I was like, hey, man, you know, can I can I put my own logo? Uh, because um, Ambi is a great name for the application. But when users, you know, get an email saying, hey, um, this, this TV show is good or this movie is good. And they see Ambi, they're, they're kind of a little thrown off. So he set it up for you where you can rename it, whatever you want. So we're just going to go ahead and just test this out. Just name it Plex Guide. And then we're just going to go here, Plex Guide dot com and I do have log uh, logos here somewhere let me see if I do plexguide.com um, plexguide png maybe no so uh, actually here we go here's the main logo let me see where this is stored at copy image address okay so if you have your own logo this this also um, displays on the front page and it also there we go. So Plex Guy version five. So it shows up on the, um, like I said, on the front page and then the emails that go out. I believe there's not a newsletter yet, or he's still working on that. But um, also to help you, he was kind enough to allow you to put your own custom donation URL, so your own PayPal and your own message. And, and again, that's nice of him because um, you know how it is. It's it's best to donate to him. Oh, there there's your message right there. So um, yeah, I remember that very well. So. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. And so if I go to the front page, log out, you see how awesome it is? So when anybody comes to your site in the future, you know, like mysite.com, and then you got the port 359. Now, again, if you're using Plex Guide, you can use the reverse proxy. So it can be like ambi.yourdomain, or, you know, however you wanna do it. But it makes it makes it easier. So um, you can make your own logo, you can make your own banner, whatever you want to do, or just make nothing, or keep the default ambi. So now I'm back in. So we saw how easy that was. And then he's got a landing page here that you can enable. So I believe this loads up before you log in. So if I say, um, you know, enjoy the server, or you know, server. You don't have to put servers up, but you know you can, you can put any message you want. Uh, donation, you can put, uh, I believe you could put HTML version information in there. Um, I remember in Ambi 2 you could, but I don't know if you could put HTML in there this time. Enjoy the server, please donate, you know, whatever whatever you want to put. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. Oh, look, this is, this is something new. Oh, okay. Well, it's not really that detailed right now, but... It looks like we're probably starting to see some of those wiki pages in the program. Okay, so I'm gonna hit submit. So if I log out, I should see that message. There you go. So it's all in one. Enjoy the server, please donate. And there's the logo, and it says the server is offline. Because right now this is a local virtual machine. But while we're here, I might as well just get a one started. So again, this is a, a Plex guide. So it's just an interface, and this is running on Ubuntu. Um, this right here is a virtual machine that I have on my network. So even if you don't know Linux that well, um, our website does contain a lot of information um, to make your life easy and what to do, including all these YouTube videos. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, log back in. So then when the server comes up, we can plug it all in. Um, if you click this tab here, here's requests. So like, let's say I go here and I request uh, Home Alone. Right. So if I go request, I don't, well, shoot, you know, okay. I think Ambi will keep track of it. I don't have anything set up right now, but let me see if it keeps track of it. Okay. So it says it's been requested. Okay. And, I, and, and his notification system has been pretty helpful. Yeah. See, there you go. So it shows that it's requested and once it is available, it will mark it automatically to available. So that's, that's, that's in itself is really helpful. So let's go back to the settings. Issues. So when people have issues, they can post things. Um, so like, let's say, I think he, he had some categories before. Okay. So anyways, you can make your own categories now. So here you could put like, you know, bad movie, um, audio off sync or whatever. So whatever categories you put, your users, you know, if you enable it, 
if you set it up, your users can report issues instead of, you know, sending you email and text and, you know, which is overwhelming and you're never going to update it anyways. But um, you can go ahead and post your issues here. So I'm just going to do bad movie. Um, let's see what else here. Sync issue, audio sync issues. So whatever, whatever you think might be common issues on your end for users to report. User importer. So this is helpful because um, it basically imports all the users that are connected as friends to your account. So he uses a cron job and it took me a while. I think version two kind of almost did it instantly or somewhat instantly. But if your users don't show up right away, don't freak out or just like I said, walk away from the program and then they'll start showing up again. But uh, Jamie, I can't tell you that on our forums, we had somebody who wanted to kind of like make this almost happen automatically. So if you're if you're watching this, um, you might know something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit run importer. There you go, submit. And then the last thing here, authentication, allow users to log in without a password. So if, if you're, I, w I wouldn't ever turn this on, but if for some reason you just want uh, your users to just get in with their username, which is kind of a half-baked solution, they can. And, and maybe you have this for certain reasons. Um, I remember a while ago there was problems with Ambi Beta a long time ago, and so I had to turn this on. So it, it's good he offered it as an option. And, and again, this might be something useful too if you're running this like internal on your network, and maybe you got you know people in your house that just do the request. So here's Plex here. So you can enable Plex, Ambi. So for whatever you want to do. So for this demo, we selected Plex. And so um, you enter your username information, which is key. Um, you can do load servers. And I believe, yeah, it will let you pick a list. So um, it will even show your buddy servers. So I don't think that will do anything. And we're going to do the local one, which is probably not loaded up yet. I don't need to claim it because it's on my own network. So this is this is going to take a minute. So it's pulling the image, OK? I'm just going to go ahead and submit it for now and come back to it. So if you're requesting TV shows, it can talk to different programs like Sonar, which is one we commonly use, um, Dog NZB, which is an NZB solution related to Sonar, or SickRage. Um, so, and then there's Medusa out there, but I, I don't see it here. And again, Jamie, that might be another note too. Um, Medusa is, is, I don't know, my experience a little bit better than SickRage. I had a uh, bait. Um, who, who, who demonstrated that to me. And then also for movie requests, you got Couch Potato, Dog NZB, and Radar. So most of our common ones are Sonar and Radar that we use. But it's great he offered uh, extra options. Couch Potato is still usable, so that might be important. Um, I've had this work before too. So if you want to set this up now, the thing is in order for your users to get emails, um, if, you use, if you use Plex Guide, uh, in the end when you configure your Google Drive, you're going to have to... Um, you can go ahead and put in your information here. So you go, you know, you'll put STMP, um, Google.com. I think it's port 587. And so you have to just set this up properly. And if you do, then it will shoot out all your emails. So you can see that he set up templates that you can use for each of your issues. Um, this video does not demonstrate that. So once I have it all configured in the future, I'll have a, a separate video and uh, maybe he can link it to his wiki for the email notifications piece. Um, so if you have a Discord channel here, same thing, you can pop it up in there, um, Slack. So it, it lets people know that certain things are available. So it, it comes in handy. Um, everybody doesn't use email nowadays, so you might have a small Slack group. Here's your updates that you can uh, set up. One second, just checking this out. So you can enable it, and you can also use your own update script if you want to. Yeah, it looks like you put that wiki thing on each page. That's, that's really new. Okay. So we're going to go back to media server and it looks like it's basically set up. So let me see if it works now. So I'll type 192 and again this is a this is a local machine for testing purposes. 32400 Okay, so we verified that everything is working. So 
loaded up the, the testplex. Here's an IP address, here's this. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit test connectivity, and then load libraries. And so right now there, there are none, but and hit submit, and we should be good to go. So now Ambi is tied in with Plex. So the question is, well, I want Ambi to do the request for me. So what do I need to do? Well, you need to configure one of these three. So for simple demo purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and do Sonar. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Plex Guide again. And let's see here, NZBs. No, it's a manager. I even have to remember it myself. So right now we're launching Sonar right now. So this is the address it generated for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. You might be tempted to do localhost, but I just recommend you just do the IP. Um, localhost is usually when you're on your own machine. Even if you are, just, just go ahead and put the IP address in. Just my experience. Okay, so sometimes you might run into issues with this. Let's see, server, host name, okay. So we need to get the API key. So let's go to Sonar. So 192, and then it's 8989. And this is a pretty simple program to utilize also Sonar. So what Sonar does is, it's kind of like, so what I, when I named them there as managers, what it does is it keeps track of um, all the TV shows that that you're requesting. So again, the, the purpose of this demo is just to show you what it is and how it ties into Ambi. Um, so I don't want it to follow up the scope outside the video. Okay, so in order to get the API key, I'm gonna go ahead and I think it's under UI, UI or general. So there's the API key. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and plug that into Ambi. And so it's gonna say get quality profile. So yeah, so once you start seeing this, that's a good sign. So if you, let's say you just only wanted HD requests, get root folders. Now I don't have any configured right now. So actually that might cause us a few problems for this video, but let me see if I can just make a, a dummy one. Let's see, go here. And we'll just pick uh, Union FS and then TV. So right now you can see that there's nothing there. So, but what it does, it creates a, a, a root folder. So let's see, Ambi might be able to see it now. So get root folder, there you go. And, and the reason this is important is because it, it well, basically tells Ambi, hey, <laughs> this is where I'm gonna be putting the shows, okay. Or keeping track of it. So it test connectivity and it's good to go. So now if I did a show, let's say we did, um, I don't know. Just type the word cars. Sometimes you can find crazy stuff you never even knew about. You're like, ooh, counting cars. So I'm gonna do a request, all seasons. Right now, no, nothing's downloading. This is, again, just a demo. So within a short time, it should say the request has been made. And then Sonar should have it on its list. See, there you go, counting cars. So let's try another thing again. So. Jamie has been helpful because he's put in this right here. Sometimes the hardest thing is to find things. So if you go to popular, you know, here's all these lovely shows here. And again, nothing's downloading. This is just a demo of the application. So we're going to do, let's say you just want to watch the last season. Some, some people just like very particular things. And there you go. Game of Thrones. So now if we check sonar, so I just dynamically came up and look what it's tracking. Um, so you can see right here that it's not caring about tracking any other shows in these seasons, you see, because only this is highlighted and that's, that's showing zero out of seven. And then there's that location right there. So it's doing it all for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the uh, one more piece and that will be the movie manager. And let's go to radar, okay? So it's the same concept. Uh, I love Radar. It, it kind of almost came out of nowhere. Everybody had a lot of frustrations with Couch Potato. Can't knock on it because, you know, any program that's made is always uh, um, definitely for free. Uh, nobody can ever complain about. But uh, Couch Potato was, was kind of developed a little bit in a day. And Radar is more caught up. And it has the same interface as uh, Sonar. So again, we're going to go ahead and use 
uh, Plex Guide here. And again, you see how fast and easy this makes your life. Also, all the folders are pretty much pre-configured for you. So uh, yeah, you really don't have to do a lot of work. It will automate all your things to your Google Drive. Okay, so uh, like same same thing, I just told you to put in that. The port forward is 778. Uh, let's go here and go to 7878. And you see, same interface like Sonar, which makes it very familiar. Okay, so again, same thing, not to go outside the scope of this video, but a lot of things are pretty much pre-configured for you in a lot of these programs. Okay, so there's the API key that's required. And then now quality profiles just show up. So you only want, you know, 1080. But right now, no root folder should show up. So, and it's the same thing that we ran into last time. So once you set up a root folder here, you'll be good to go. Because I think a lot of new users will try to configure Ambi and they're just like, uh, I really don't get what it's asking me to do, which is very normal. Because again, there's a lot of uh, things that go on. So UnionFS, movies, obviously nothing's here. It's just a demo. So obviously you can see that there's nothing here. And, and even though you can use either sonar and, and um, radar to request things, they tend to hang up. Uh, the list gets long. Ambi just makes it simple. And Ambi finds like, it finds things outside what they find. So that's why I would always recommend Ambi. And then obviously your users too, so they're not driving you up the wall. Thanks, Jamie, for that. You have, you have no idea. See? And then availability. Uh, normally you say physical web. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to ever select this. Uh, main reasons is one, go watch the damn movie. So I always support all movies by going to the movie theater. And then two, um, if there's any uh, legal copies out there <laughs> on the web, you can go ahead and pick that, test connectivity, and then hit submit. And so now you know it works. So like, let's say you're just looking for Home Alone. See, so there's the one we requested earlier. Now I don't know if this will tie in automatically earlier because the request wasn't it wasn't made. Um, okay, so let's say you said Home Alone two, Home Alone four, and again this is not downloading anything. But now, um, radar should be keeping track of them. Let's see. And there you go. So they automatically showed up. So they show up as missing. And here's your location. And like, like I said, Ambi, Ambi is just awesome if you set it up all the way through, definitely with the notifications, because it will let users know, hey, stuff's done. Hey, stuff's requested. Uh, if he is doing that newsletter, it, it will shoot out information automatically for you. So um, I hope you enjoyed this, this quick demo on Ambi. Like anything, you know, if you like the video, um, you know, please like it, subscribe. Um, I know you hear that in a lot, but it really does help our uh, community base grow. Leave any comments. Um, go to you know, go to uh, you know his GitHub page here. You know, show show um, show him some love with a with a donation. You know, so I bought him many multiple beers. I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. He's even got the uh, crazy mustache thing going on. So, hey, hey Jamie, you still got it like that? <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, because he hasn't changed that in a year. And, and you can see how much of an impact he has. Look how many Docker pulls he has. And you know that's not including, um, see, there's the downloads going on. So that, that's including, not including all the other downloads that have gone on, gone on everywhere else. But one thing I can tell you about using uh, Plex Guide is, is that it uses Docker. And long story short, is basically, um, I'll show you real quick. It basically deploys uh, YML scripts and... Um, and, and again, we use uh, Anzabel to streamline it. And so, for example, if I go to his, I go to Ambi. Let's see. And you know, Jamie, it's good. It's good you put the version three out officially, because um, I've been using the developer edition. So we we might we might change things here. So here you see, it just says remove the container, deploy the new container. Here's the ports. Here's the permissions. Here's the data. And so. Um, we even streamline where all the data goes, so it makes it easy for, for backing up. So uh, one thing about Ambi is make sure you back up your data because uh, it, it's a pain to, to kind of set it up all over again. Definitely with the amount of requests that were made. So if I go to CD opt 
app data. And this, again, this is our program's configuration. See right there? So you can see Ambi version three, and there's his information sitting in there. So if I go to CD Ambi version three, and there's everything, the database. And Plex God does have the ability to back up, let's see, if you're changing servers. So all you gotta do is back it up, and you'll be good to go. And you have the ability to restore it. So at any time, you can just deploy an Ambi in an instance of a heartbeat and you just kind of go from there. So other than that, I really appreciate your time. And uh, hey, Jamie, thanks for making an awesome program. Um, I hope to see more good things. I, I think I need to send you some more beer money again. Maybe this might count for a little bit of it. All right, later.